I've always been fascinated by Transformers animations, and I'm talking specifically about the actual transformations from vehicle to robot. And as an animator, it's something I've always wanted to try, but could never figure out a good plan of attack. And it didn't help that there were no good breakdowns or tutorials of how others have pulled off their Transformers animations. But from making my weekly videos for this channel, I've learned some new tricks and techniques and decided it was time for me to finally do this. And I'm gonna blow the money shot right here and now. Check this out. There it is. But since I've always been looking for a good breakdown of how a Transformers animation is done, it would be irresponsible of me not to record this process and make a detailed video of how I did it. So let's go back to the beginning of this very complicated and at times a bit stressful process that was 100% worth the effort I put in. But first, let's watch the transformation one more time. so happy with how this turned out. Okay, so the first thing to do was pull a bunch of reference material. So I grabbed shots of Bumblebee transforming from a bunch of different sources. The trailers for his solo movie, from the Michael Bay movies, from an awesome YouTuber called Osro who does a lot of 2D Transformers animations, and finally from one of my favorite video game franchises, War for Cybertron. I even ordered a book on the art of the sequel, Fall of Cybertron, to use as a reference. The only video I could find of someone actually talking about how they did their Transformers animation was a behind the scenes on Fall of Cybertron by the lead animator. And while it wasn't really that in depth, it did have some useful pieces of information. One little tidbit being that each robot did have two separate models that were swapped between mid-transformation. We're not just dealing with one robot or one mesh, if you would. We're actually doing a sleight of hand kind of magician's trick where we sub in um, a vehicle for the robot. I didn't actually end up doing this myself exactly, but it did help me realize that an elaborate transformation couldn't be done by just having the character fold themselves up. The end result would just be too boxy, like the oldest version of the toys or like a folding Halloween costume. Okay, that is pretty impressive, but it's not what I'm going for. What I had to do was actually something I figured out when doing that Zoids video a few weeks ago. See, for that, when animating Liger Zero, I needed two sets of armor to be able to swap onto him. So I built a skeleton of the character with no armor and linked the pieces of the armor to the skeleton, shoulder to shoulder, head armor to head, and so on. So for Bumblebee, what I decided to do was something similar, but each piece of the armor would have to animate into a different shape during the transformation. Once I got my reference material, I made a rough drawing of what I wanted B to look like in his final robot form, heavily referencing the Bumblebee movie design. I made a couple of changes, for instance, I liked how the War of Cybertron design and the old cartoon design had his wheels become part of his ankle or heel, whereas in the movie version, his back wheels kind of just disappear. After that, I jumped back to the videos of Bumblebee transforming and watched them in slow motion over and over and over and over again to get an idea of how his different pieces were moving and how they were changing. In watching the animations in slow motion, I noticed that some of his bits actually shrink, but you can't tell when the whole complicated transformation is happening at once. That was a trick I'd definitely take advantage of later on. After that, I roughly mapped out where I'd want the pieces to move to, from car to robot. This changed as I progressed, but it stayed basically the same. Next step was to make and rig the skeleton. I roughed it out, then inked and colored the different limbs in separate layers, as I would for any regular human character rigs. With that done, I brought the pieces into After Effects and rigged them together with a plugin called Duic which is totally free and absolutely fantastic. I'll link it in the description. This thing is a lifesaver for anyone doing character animation in After Effects. My basic character rigs have seven controllers for movement. Two for the arms, two for the legs, a waist, a torso, and a head. I also usually make various hands to swap between, but for the purposes of this video, it wasn't necessary. Though I do intend to add an arm cannon onto this rig down the road. After the skeleton was built, I inked and colored the car. Then it was time for the transformation. First, I animated the movement that I wanted to occur during the transformation. 
When in car mode, I knew he'd have to be all folded up and then stretch out into a standing position as he transformed. I thought that fist slam he did during his transformation in Transformers 1 was pretty cool, so I made my rig do something like that. Next, I made a copy of the car and started pulling pieces off of it and laying them down over the skeleton in about the spot I knew I wanted them to end up. They'd all have to be tweaked or even redrawn in the shift from car to robot, but I wanted as many of the car elements as possible to stay recognizable as car pieces when in robot mode. Next, I took the redrawn pieces into After Effects along with the original car drawing, which I used as a base while laying out the pieces of the armor onto the skeleton when it was all folded up in car mode. Then I animated all the pieces changing from their car mode shape into their robot mode shape. Also, there was a ton of trial and error stuff in here, and I'm glossing over it. At one point I was just laying on my bed staring up at the ceiling trying to figure out what to do. Anyway, when the bits were all transforming as I wanted them to, I attached them to the rig and did a lot of position remapping to make sure they moved across the robot smoothly during the transformation and none of the pieces were floating off him during the shift. This included making them move ever so slightly in a 3D space to make sure things like his thigh armor wouldn't be in front of his arm. And after a ton of tweaking and cleaning up, I finally got to this. The only thing left to do was to make this rig easier to use, because this project got super messy, and the point of rig is to make the character easy to animate in the future. So I linked all the armor animations to sliders, and attached all those to one master slider. This lets me do all of the armor changes with one control. All I'd have to do manually after that was the actual skeleton movements. And as a thank you to everyone who watched this all the way to the end, I've uploaded the project and put it in the description below, so anyone can download it and mess around with it, so long as you have a copy of After Effects CS6 or above. Also, you might need to install Duik. I'm not actually sure, but it's free, and you should get it regardless, because it's fantastic. But that's all for this week. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and I hope this was helpful, or at least interesting, and be sure to subscribe to see lots more animations like this going forward. I'll probably do some more character rig breakdowns down the line, and I'll probably even take requests for rigs to build in videos, or maybe even in live streams. So comment if you've got some ideas for projects for me to tackle in the future. Alright everybody, goodbye.